Be sure and tell them Large Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Sometimes that shaggy looks right into you, right into your eyes. You know the thing about a shaggy, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white and then... Oh, then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming. The ocean turns red, and despite all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in and they rip you to pieces. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sunnis Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie. And I'm Sweetie. And it's summer, you guys. It is summer, summer, summer time, summer time. So we just eat. sit back and unwind. We're just like sit back and unwind. You, you know, we're watching a lot of summer flicks. We're watching the summer flicks. We're keeping them coming. We're eating a lot of hot dogs. Going to the going beach. beach, dude. I am like a crispy. I keep calling myself a baked bean. Both from the color of the baked bean and I'm basically baked. My skin is baked. And you're from Boston, so it's like a bean. I am a Boston baked, baked bean. bean. Yeah, good our, one. Our summer has been like kind of off the charts, actually. You know, the weather's been nice. We just came back from some sweet days on old Cape Cod. Good old Cape Cod. And then we were like, let's watch a summer movie. And we were like, what movie should we watch? And fun fact about this movie before we reveal it, this actually was the first summer blockbuster. Whoa. And it takes place the week of July 4th, which it just was. So fitting. Sweetie, did you know that the, you know, before this movie came out, um, nobody went to the movies in the summer because no. everyone was too busy outside doing outdoor stuff. Was vacationing. this before air conditioning? I'm confused. Um, pro- yeah, I mean, probably like on a mass level that that air conditioning is mm. now. So no one saw movies in the summer, yeah, so they didn't really like release any. And then what happened is this movie got delayed. We'll tell you about it later. And so it was supposed to get released in Christmas, which is like, why would they release this in Christmas? Yeah. So dumb. Dumb. Got released in the summer, and then people were going gaga over this film, and it became the first summer blockbuster ever. Wow. So that's pretty cool. So it was really fitting to do this as our summer, like you said, kicks on. And I think it's time to reveal that the movie is Jaws. You guys, it's a tuba that makes that no, early sound. I wasn't aware I of that until I read the no trivia. No idea. Me neither. Um, me neither. You guys, this was. I knew this day would come when <laughs> when Sweetie would force me to watch this movie for the podcast, and I knew it was going to come because it's a great movie. Yada yada yada. I know it's a classic. I know it's an amazing film. But right. you don't deny that. It's, it's no, not I've never deny denied it. that. No. The problem is that I literally cannot watch it without dying inside. I gotta say, and crying. Sweetie gets the "I'm too scared to watch this movie, but I have to anyway" for the podcast award because she did so well. Well, so well. I, mean, I kept looking over at you, and you were watching it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think you were Who's confusing. That girl on the couch? I think you were confusing my tricks, where <laughs> I stare at an indistinct <laughs> object, like in the background, instead of the t- feet, well, how would or I know? or I position my legs so that it's blocking most of the television set. Dang. So, like, I mean, the end I can watch because that, and I'll talk about this. How like 
th- that part is fine, but it's the beginning part up to leading to um, after like the chum bucket incident. It's <laughs> all that. It's all that <laughs> that is just like that's really the name really of your new, stressful. That's the name me. of your new band, by the way. The chum, the chum bucket, bucket incident. incident. Yeah. Um, I just have such a hard, and I believe it's because of this movie and how I saw it when I was so little that it just like. Branded this image of a shark's japing gauze, jaws coming out of the water in my head. And now it's just like any time I see that in a movie, real sharks, TV sharks, whatever, well, any sharks, I will freak out. From my years of, of listening to this and listening to this specific concern that you have, is it more of things jumping out of water, right? Doesn't well, it become that eventually well, like... What- snowballed into that yeah but i think that's all started because of this yes. movie like i don't think i would have know, that fear you do you it's not like that you even have like an irrational fear of sharks right i mean sharks are scary but you don't think they're like the coolest people like people who watch shark i have an shark, irrational but- fear of sharks that come that just like pop up on the television right, so like the surprise so shark. i think that <laughs> is an irrational fear because it's like it's happen? not something that you encounter like all the time but it actually is because <laughs> i have just i mean i can't watch movie montages ever again because i know they're just yeah. gonna like slip in the shark I mean, from jaws clearly, because they're like oh what a great scene and you're like no it's terrifying right. so clearly this left like a huge imprint on you when you were little watching this for the first time which we were trying to kind of kind of pinpoint like when we saw this movie for the first time so this movie was from 1975 predates the sweeties by you know quite a, quite a bit of time here one i'm not totally sure i watched on tv i guess probably because like would we have rented this film I no i think it was, it was think always so. on tv in the summer okay uh, Maybe just that like was constantly it, it was just you know as a as a family we watched movies together and yeah. i have spe- a specific memory of watching this movie when i was like five or six and i hid under that like heavy afghan blanket we had yeah. and it was in the summer and i was so hot and sweaty but i was hiding under the blanket because i was so scared i don't yeah. know why i didn't just fucking leave but i guess that says something about like my curiosity of like horror movies in general how they were so terrifying but there was something about them that made me want to keep watching them yeah and like in typical steven spielberg okay so Jurassic Park is probably my favorite Steven Spielberg, right? And I would say, like, this is my number two. And I feel like this and that are, like, similar in the sense that it's, like, animals, you know, doing crazy shit. And like running amok. Running amok and, like, scaring the shit out of you. And I, I've, I would have seen those movies kind of near each other, too. And the great thing, though, with Steven Spielberg is that his movies, like, because in the cases of those two... The scenes are done so well. I wouldn't say the gore is like over the top and not the point of this movie or the star at all, right? Because a huge part of this movie is that, you know, you don't see a lot of the violence that's happening or you see very briefly or you see the water filled with blood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like not even that gory or something that like really like you would even have a problem with maybe that point of it when you're little. But it scared the shit out of me. Both this and Jurassic Park. Maybe just the like thinking about it. Because as Steven Spielberg said, sometimes it is like what you don't see that is scarier than what you actually see. And what happened with this movie was that the shark malfunctioned so much that they really couldn't use it a lot. Which made Steven Spielberg, I think, do many, much less shots of the actual shark Mm -hmm. than he intended to do. But which I think made a scarier and better film. Right. And I think that's the general consensus is that it was just such a happy accident that the shark malfunctioned the way it did, because if it had worked, I think that um, it it would not have been dubbed as the classic because unfortunately, and I mean, this goes, I did say that I don't find the latter half of the movie scary. And maybe that's because you see the shark so much and it does look so fake. And so if they did show it all the time, then you'd be like, wow, that is a fake. It'd be like Jaws 2 and Jaws 3D and Jaws 4. <laughs> like, mm-hmm, it would mm-hmm. be like stupid yeah. instead of scary. Um, so I think it was, yeah, I think that's, yeah, definitely the general consensus. Um, but yeah, wow, you guys. I mean, I've so my history with this movie is that obviously the traumatic incident or I saw it, watched it underneath the Afghan blanket is number one. Um, a couple other incidents sprinkled in there, like cilantro. We got, um, I was just like making, like pouring myself a soda in the kitchen. I like look over to the TV set and there's like this girl trying to get into a boat and this big shark is just like, has 
like swallowed her and like pulls her back down and that was what i saw and i was just like what the fuck see like that's why i can't just look at the television Wait, whatever you that? want that's jaws 2 oh, two which two. we saw when we were in ireland yeah. and i like relive that fear mm-hmm. and i was like okay that's pretty scary um <laughs> it wasn't just like an irrational well, it's scene like that jaws i saw one and two are so similar even though not similar at all in the sense jaws 2 is like kind of a bad movie but it takes place like sort of around the same time it like looks kind of the same so i mesh a lot of the scenes from jaws 2 into this one by accident because mm. I'm like, oh, wait, did that happen just one well, or just And two? we just saw Jaws 2 over Christmas. Sure. Um, but so, yeah, so there was that. And then everything else that I have other up until recently are just snippets. Like, I think I saw the movie, but I'm not sure because I okay. saw it under a blanket or behind my yeah. hands. And then Sweetie and I, I made Sweetie uh, watch it with me after, as part of my horror blog to, like, face my fear and, like, really jump in there. And that was horrifying and I like tried to make it a rule where like I couldn't close my eyes like a clockwork orange like eye opener thing and be like I'm gonna watch it but I like could not do that at all I had to take like a shot of gin to like calm myself down but it like immediately made me feel sick and I was like no um so there was that and then this is this is like the only other time I've seen it like the whole way through that's awesome I mean I've seen it a bunch of times I love this movie I think I actually I watched it last fourth of July too uh I remember I made a lobster roll and I'm pretty sure I watched that movie um I, I think this is like such a terrific film. I love it so much. And like it had some like great old actors in it, which again is something that like when I was watching this when I was young, clearly like no idea who any of those people were, except probably Richard Dreyfus, because Richard Dreyfus is probably one of the only actors that like moved into the realm of movies then that we saw later a little bit more, right? Yeah. Um, but everyone else, like just really amazing actors, but from the older like generation that like like mom and carol and our grandmother saw this in the movie theater and like i'm sure at the time like they were like holy shit like these like these are big big name actors that they're they were really familiar with but like we just weren't um and i love it and i've i was obviously scared of it when i was little but i don't have the fear that sweetie has of of that like proportion at all i still think it is a terrifying film and i will go over the scenes that scared the shit out of me probably the same ones that everyone has but that just like stay with you and stay with you and we're like huge uh, i'm a huge beach goer and i love swimming and i love going in the water and as you all know there's been great white sharks slowly making their way to the cape in the last couple years they're like all over cape cod attacking seals they had we've had a couple shark attacks mostly just people you know, it's it's not a myth. The most shark attacks happen in three feet of water or under, which they say in this film. And it's hard to believe, right? Because you're like, that's like wading in the water. So whenever I dive into the water, though, I just for like a split second always think, like, is there a shark out there? Am I going to come like face to face with a shark? Or when I'm just like treading water like that and I'll get like a little tug. Oh, my God. oh can you imagine <laughs> that? No. So I always go through my mind and I like am able to calm myself down. Like I said, I love swimming, but like I don't think if you've seen this movie, there's no way you go. You don't go into the ocean and think that every time you do. I'm sorry. If you don't, you're a Or liar. if you have a really irrational fear, anytime you go in any kind of water, whether it be a pool. <laughs> oh um, just like, I don't know. I just remember one time in Florida, like every time I went underwater, I kept envisioning that I was like swimming into a shark mouth. And it like really, fucked me. It really fucked me up. No. So, I mean, it's just like anything. And now, I mean, really this movie has ruined the beach for me <laughs> because I love going to the beach, but I get too hot and I don't want to swim because I don't want to die. So I get too hot and then I'm like, I hate the beach, but I love Love it. Um, and then briefly also ruined pools and also all water related things plus whales. Like I there's a <laughs> whole just like things okay. coming out of the water. We're getting you to a hypnotherapist okay. ASAP to get you hypnotized out of Ugh, this fear. It's bad, all you those guys. are amazing it's things bad, that you, you need to participate I'm fine with in. Pools now, but yeah. Well, thank God, because there's no animals in there. <laughs> Well, there shouldn't be, but what a crazy person you I are. Don't know. I don't know. I'm worried about you. Oh boy. Okay. Well, enough gabbing. I say we get into it. It's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah, sweeties. Quit playing with yourself, Hoopa. <laughs> sheriff Brody is the sheriff in a town in the town of Amity. 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 Amity Sorry. Island. I was like, I know they said it wrong, but they said it weird. Uh, which is a, like uh, some kind of island off the coast of New York or something. Used to be a cop um, on the mean streets of New York City. Oh, wow. Yeah. Didn't, didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, listen, guys. It's the 4th of July, the week. Big week for tourism on Amity Island. 
Um, Mary Larry Vaughn is really psyched about it. He's like, we can get all the people on the beach. What is, what is his name? On the beach. Mayor Larry. Larry Vaughn. Vaughn. Mayor Larry Vaughn. Um, unfortunately, the night before, a harmless bonfire turned into a scandalous skinny dip in which the girl swam out to a buoy and then died because a shark or something pulled her underneath and killed her. Her partner fell asleep on the beach. He's useless as fuck. And then partner, I think someone she made just saw, yeah. sex eyes made with sex across eyes from the bonfire and was like, let's go skinny dipping. Woo woo. Taking off my clothes. He's like, I'm too drunk. And then just like passes out in the sand. What a useless no. piece of yeah. shit. I'm Maybe just like, she would have survived I, if he had been there. Or would there have been two victims? There may have been Thoughts. two. I think two victims. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I mean, a couple lessons here. Number one, don't go drunk skinny dipping. Not a good idea. It's just like even if there wasn't a shark, you could before, probably, probably drown bad. because yeah. you're drunk. It's, it's not good. Yeah. I, every time I've woken up the next morning after having done it, regret it. Yeah, regret it's it. Just too, like, and then what, also, what, could, what something could yeah. happen. Also, don't go swimming at night because that's when sharks feed and Ooh, it's very dangerous. Call, so don't do that. Um, but yeah, so that's the general lesson. Uh, next morning, the useless dick face goes to the cops and is like, "Hey." Uh, the girl I was with, I think she drowned. Nuts! Like he doesn't seem upset that guy about gets it. The biggest dick award he's like, ever. Not he's upset not about upset. it at all. I remember what he said. He's like, "I reported it, didn't I?" Yeah, like <laughs> she's probably dead. Like no big deal. No, yeah. So <laughs> he's such a loser. Yeah. Oh my god, I hate he's that guy. He's a super loser. He's so, a um, so they find a body washed ashore on the beach, and it's just in parts. There's like an arm, like half a torso. It's gruesome. So Sheriff Brody's like, okay. I mean, easy solution here. That was a shark attack, and he writes it down as such in the in the death report. Yeah, I love that. And um, the the mayor's like, well, let me tell you something. It was not a shark attack, Brody. It was a boating accident. It was a boating accident. Like, what boating accident is that? She's like swimming in the dark, and somebody's like, "Here I am in my boat," and just like. <laughs> Oh, like, right. First of all, her right. with the propeller? it was at night. Second of all, she wasn't out that far. Third of all, like, um, did they ba- go back and forth over her with the <laughs> propeller about a dozen times? Because that would have mangled the body as such as what they saw it. So clearly, Mayor Larry Vaughn is interested in the amount of money that the 4th of July and Amity Island, you know, the 4th of July produces on Amity Island. We can't say, Jacques, no one comes on vacation. They don't, they don't make any money. I mean, like, I don't go in the water, but I still go to the beach. Here's what you do, Larry, Mayor Larry Vaughn. Install some showers. Put in some kitty tide pools where people can just like leisurely get nice and cool. Yeah. Like it's not. OK, we'll talk about this I mean, in like, a minute. To but- his credit, like so I forget if the medical examiner is like tote shark attack. He's not because he like Mayor Larry Vaughn like gets to well, him. He's, he's not like, an expert. Can't, yeah, yeah. Like you can't say shark attack, like say the boat thing. But there wasn't any other like proof yet right so this is the first thing that happened so i do give them like and they hadn't had any history of shark attacks in the area so like i do give them like a little bit of credit but what also is interesting is that like okay chief brody chief brody is a landlubber this comes out later scared of the water like i said was formerly a you know a, a cop on the mean streets of manhattan so like does does he just jump to a shark attack because it's like, wow, I've never seen like damage to this and it just clean it just seems obvious? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. It just I mean it seems obvious. What else would it be? What and else also, could it possibly and he's like be terrified of water, so I feel like he always jumps to the worst conclusion because he's like, Well, clearly, like it's this because yeah. like I hate the water too. Yeah, yeah. So so the mayor is like, No, we're not closing the beaches, like fuck you. So they go to the beach. This is the like third of July or something. I don't think it's the fourth of July. Yeah, yet, it hasn't right? happened yet. Yeah. There are a couple of things. Hasn't weeks, happened yet. Like, but uh, he goes to the beach with his family. He like sits and is like super vigilant and it's just like watching for all signs of anything. Yeah. Like anytime someone screams, he's like, Oh shit, oh shit. Yeah. But it's just and like I always love that nothing. Because it's like it's freaking you out because there's yeah. like there's just all these little things and he's just like on red alert and this guy's trying to talk to him and they do this great thing where like, I forget how they do it to distract you. So like you can't hear what the guy's really saying either. And like you're basically in like hmm. in his shoes because that guy well, Bad Hat Harry, old man. He just Bad like, Hat Harry's telling some like dumb story. Like, or something. I'm old. I don't know. He's yeah. just like, in, but like yeah. I don't remember what story that guy was telling either. It's not important. So exactly because then, you're worried about the shark. So there's a bunch of people in the water at this point. 
Little Alex Kittner is on his yellow raft, which, by the way, not allowed in the ocean, people. Float, well, inflatable Well, I think it was in 1975. Things. Because of this, they changed it? Well, my theory, and I have been to some ocean beaches where they do allow it, but... On Bays, Cape, yes, but... Uh, well, not. on the Cape Cod National Seashore, which is basically all the beaches that are on the Cape, like, they don't... They don't allow it, which I always thought was because, like, they don't want people, like, floating away. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> right? Because it can, it can get rough. If, and you can just be like, whoa, riptide. If you, if like, you ah. are a lifeguard at an ocean, please let us know if that is the case. Um, so anyway, so Alex is on his raft. He's, like, loving life. Do, 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 do. And then we hear the the telltale. Dun-na, 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 and we see the perspective from the bottom, which is very scary. And then... Mayhem ensues and like a, wa- a red water spout just like erupts from the raft. Everyone screams and like gets out of the water. But we do see him like flailing on the raft. Yeah. Right? Old ladies are like trampled. Um, it's did, bad. Did you want to talk Pippin or no? I don't even I, I don't know if I I mean, we'll talk You're about ready? it. Maybe okay. I we'll don't talk about uh, it, the, the scary scenes. OK. <sighs> it's very upsetting. Yeah. So I was like, um, ah! Water, out of the water like <laughs> flipping so out, the fuck and then out. everyone's out and alex kittner's mother like comes up and looks for him and she's like alex alex and then his little like sad yellow raft torn apart yeah. with like covered in Bitten blood and like shreds. blood water is just like washing up and it's horrifying it's and like the sad thing it's, was like, the most that, like, horrifying the mom thing. wanted to go home and alex was like just one just 10 more minutes 10 more yeah minutes. she was like fine yeah um 10 more minutes cost him his life sucks it sucks um so then mayor mayor larry vaughn is like okay you might have been right about that shark thing. <laughs> but here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a bounty on that shark. And whoever catches it gets like $3,000, $5,000. How many? I don't know. A lot of money. I think it was three. Um, random amount. But. No, because remember, doesn't the Kittner boy's mom put up the bounty like for She only has like $3,000. Well, that was, I mean, I think that was like a large sum in 1975. Yeah, but it's like a random amount. Like but then she up also. To a $5, advertises like in papers and stuff so okay. it suddenly becomes yeah. like people flocking to this island to hunt down this killer shark mm-hmm. meanwhile she chief brody calls up a ring a ding ding can i get someone from the oceanographic institute down here we got a shark problem <laughs> who did they send but hooper the pooper Matt Hooper. Matt. Matt. Matt's like, what's his name? Toby? No. Nope. Oh, my God. He's like this tiny little nugget. He like comes off. He's like, ah, look at me. My like tiny little boat hat that's like falling off my head. And my like tiny it's little It's like a ski shoes. cap. Isn't it like a ski I cap? Know. And he's like this like sailor duffel bag. Turns out you learn later. He's kind of like a rich kid who was like, fuck you. Like, I'm going to like do cool ocean stuff okay. and be a like But sailor. he loves sharks. But he loves sharks. And he knows a lot about sharks. He knows a lot about sharks. So what happens? He's like, let me look at the body. Let me look at the first victim's body because that's really like all they have. Meanwhile, it's body parts. Uh, mind you, it's body parts, not like a full body. So <laughs> I love that scene because they go into the, uh, what is that Coroner's called? Office. Coroner's office. Poor little Chrissy, whatever his name is, big boobs. Uh, is like kept in a drawer <laughs> like a bin like because her body parts yeah. are just there's a couple it's parts it's pretty sad and so I think like Matt Hooper is expecting like a you know the mor- the morgue where you like pull out the whole body mm-hmm. or to be like wheeled out in like a stretcher and when the guy like basically just like takes it out of a drawer and is like bloop and then he like pulls open the thing and he has this like cool little microphone because he's like mm. doing like a notice that high uh, tech yeah high tech. like a vi- uh, audio recording of it because he's like taking notes Oh my God, I love that scene because he's like flipping out and he, he like can't breathe. He's like, <gasps> he's like, can I have a glass of water? <laughs> and like the little like uh, undertaker guy like gives him this like tiny little paper <laughs> cup and he takes like one sip and he's starting taking the notes and he's like describing like the, the injuries on this victim. And he's like, there is no way this was a boating accident. This was done by a shark. So, you know, the conclusion everybody knows. Shark attack, guys. It was a shark, shark attack. attack. We knew it this whole time. Yeah. We were there. Um, so all these like crazy old men come to town and try to hunt the shark. All of a sudden, cut to a shark that somebody caught, and they think it's the one. But it's a tiger shark. And Hooper realizes, all right, guys, I don't think this can be the shark. And they're like, why the fuck not? We just caught this. It's obviously the shark. And he's like, no, it's not, because the bite radius is significantly smaller than the one that was on the victim. Therefore, it cannot be the shark that killed her. And everybody's like, you're dumb. You're, yeah. That's, that's false. That's false. We're opening the beaches again, and we caught the shark. Bye. So 
that night, uh, Brody and Hooper enjoy a couple of like tall ale glasses of wine, like yeah. um, steins Not of wine, like a pint glass of um, wine. Yeah, and then they go and they cut that shark open. They're like, "Well, let's cut her open. Let's cut it open. If it is indeed the shark that killed her, we should see some human body remains in there." So they cut it open. Guess what, guys? Nothing. Nothing is in the shark because it was not the shark. <sighs> okay. So, and then does he have time to tell them that before the next thing? No. I think he does, but like Larry Vaughn is still like, no, no, like we yeah. have to. I forget like the timeline. It'll be fine. Because I think you're right. I think that does happen before the next one. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. He does, and remember that's when they do the shark spotters. Mm -hmm. So they make like yeah. basically like a ring around like the swimming area. It's the ocean, but still they kind of like guard the the area, and they have guys with guns, and they have a helicopter, mm -hmm. like every which they kind of like is the modern shark days shark yeah. spotting stuff that we have now, like helicopters from above, right. and people are like aware, aware, aware. Unfortunately, some dumbass loser children decide that this is a great time to pull a prank. And by prank, I mean they make a cardboard shark fin, grab some snorkels, and decide to like really fucking freak people out, which is like it's fucking rude. Yo, not the right time. And meanwhile, Brody's child is like, Dad, Dad, I want to go swimming. And he's like, No, you can't go swimming. And he's like, Dad, Dad, please, like you suck. Please let me go swimming. And then he's like, Okay, fine. Go in the salt pond. Go in the salt pond. The salt pond's for old ladies. Yeah, but he's like, just just fucking do it. I don't want you to get eaten by a shark, damn it. So the kid goes and everyone's like, Yeah, hey, okay. So then these two kids get discovered as causing this ruckus and they're like, It was a hoax. It was all a hoax. Meanwhile, the fucking real shark is swimming into the salt pond. I mean, imagine that timing. And then there's this one girl there's one girl that's like, a shark! A shark. shark, and everyone's like, "Oh, please!" We like, already come on. know it was a fake shark. No. <laughs> then there's this pedophile on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we've concluded after this watching. <laughs> so it's like this really weird scene where there's like a this like salt pond, which is basically like the water all made, made into this pond area, and there's like this bridge that goes over it, like an estuary, something like that. Yeah. So Mikey and his friends have this like new sailboat, and they're like trying figure out how to tie a knot or something and this fucking pedophile comes like rowing up in his boat and be like hey kids no it's like twice around and through the inside like you can see like the knot they're tying it's like so weird and then a second later he's like wait what are you kids doing boom oh man shark roll like demolishes his little skipper what is skipper dinghy, dinghy? It's like a dinghy. it's basically a dinghy and knocks him over that guy's dead he gets eaten and then <laughs> <laughs> and then he the swims shark swims by Mikey. The shark swims by yeah, Mikey. Because they all end up. So, like, when he crashed into the pedophile's boat, <laughs> I don't know about that guy's a pedophile. He's a pedophile, we, pedophile. Just, we just came to that conclusion on this watching, you know, rewatch. You, you know let what? us know. I have like a couple <laughs> words that like British people say different than us that are like my favorite that. and my favorite to all time one, which is inappropriate to use in everyday circumstances. But whenever I can use it, I get very excited is pedophile. Pedophile. It's great. It's a pedophile. I got also, my, her literally, my herbs and the pedophile. And <laughs> controversy. Controversy. How about schedule? Schedule. Uh, I like contro controversy better. Controversy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, so like the wake from when that other guy's boat got hit knocks all the kids off their little sailboat, and so they're all in the water. And like the, the other kids like bomb it to shore. For some reason, uh, Mikey just is like in shock, freezes. The, the shark don't want him. The shark does not want him. I'm surprised. I mean, I thought I think, he had a bigger stomach I than think that. the shark just wants, it wants Brody. It wants Brody. It's after Brody. But it's Brody's family, which he sees. Because let's remember, in two, little Mikey makes it again. And similar situation. Not so. for lack of trying. The sharks still wanted him. I mean, they had like the sharks have like a vendetta against the Brody family for right. some unknown reason. But wants to leave Mike whatever. untouched. Yeah, so he leaves but, him untouched. Yeah. But so they drag him out of the water. He's okay yeah, he's shocked. a little shell shocked. He's um, in shock basically, and they're like, okay, that was fucked up. And then Mayor Larry Vaughn again is like, oh man. Um, well, he's pretty shaken up this time. Really sorry about that. Yeah, because his kids Gosh, were on the beach. That could have been now, my kids. Now it means and Brody a lot was more. like, "It fucking was my kid, bitch." Yeah, that guy sucks. I like, can't. I, I can't even. So, um, so then he's like, "Okay, we're calling the experts. We're getting a shark hunter. We're taking Hooper. We're going on a boat. We're gonna catch that fucking shark." So who do they call? 
Captain Quint, Quint, who's like this old drunk man who's like wanders around town and like spouts crazy stories and he's like, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. He's today like, I went to the park and then it was yeah. fun. He's like the town, town loony. Um, I mean, I'm sure like a pretty like legit sailor. I think drinks way too much apricot brandy, let's be honest, and is just kind of shit faced all the time because he always acts kind of shit faced. But is a but, shark catcher. Yeah. He is familiar. Several catching, catching the shark. shark jaws. Catching the squalus. <laughs> in his little shack, which demonstrates that he's quite good at it. So they go out with him on his little boat. It's like ring a ding. I think it's too small immediately, but like, I mean, I'm sure I'm biased because I know the, the line that happens next, but it just seems like a very small boat. They don't know how big the shark is at this point, so right. it's fine. So it's fine. And the boat's called the orca. Interesting fact orcas being the only actual predators for. Great white sharks. Woohoo. Um, I think it's like a regular size fishing boat. I mean, it's not probably once you see that the shark is 30 feet long, you know, the wrong size. But when they have no idea and we don't really even know, because like, okay, so I said before that they really take their time showing you the shark, right? So it's not shown at all at all at all. And when it knocks into the pedophile's boat, it, you basically see a little bit of it. So I think that's the first time you see like a little you bit of it. You can see right? a lot of it, but yeah. it's under the water. Right. And it's like the scariest shot in the world that it's I like never knew existed. Shot, no, it's it? a real, like if you look it up on on your phone, you see like everything. Mm. And it's actually the most terrifying th- like thing I can ever dream of in my worst nightmares. Whoa. Um, Whoa. But, you, but it's quick, so you don't, um, you don't like see it if you're not looking. Um, but it's very scary. So that you do see. Okay. Um, but the first like full glimpse into the gaping jaw mouth is the chum bucket. Okay. Incident. Yeah. Yeah. So they get on board and like they already know that like Quinn's pretty like unhinged, but he goes with Hooper. So they're kind of like balancing him out. So you have Hooper driving the boat. You have Quinn as the Quint as the one who's doing the um, like the fishing rod. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah. Um, Doing the rod. So he's the one who's going to like catch it because they think they're going to catch this with like a fucking fishing rod. Like, whoa. Biggest understatement of your life. I know. And then they have Brody as the, you know, the basically non sailor, let's say, in charge of the chum bucket. Oh, (laughs) boo, chum bucket. So basically, if you don't know, the chum is like what you, you know, it's just like fish heads and blood and all this stuff that you like put in the water, attract other, whatever fish that you're trying to catch, right? Um, so in this case, it's giant shark. So it's like giant bucket of like bloody fish guts that Brody is literally like scooping it, just scooping it into the ocean. And I think they do before that. Actually, there's a thing where like the line gets caught and he's kind of like playing with him. Right. So like that's the beginning part that so, you know, it's like around them and it's like gonna it's it's just kind of searching it out, searching it out. And then there's like something happens, whatever. And he's like, Brody, like get back on that chum bucket. And so he starts like just scooping it and he's and Brody's just pissed and he's like a cigarette dangling from his mouth and he's like, man, why do I get this fucking job? And he's like just basically like very like laxadaisily like throwing the chum into the water. Go, 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 go. Thing like just pops out of the water out of nowhere. It's huge mouth. And then it's it, jaws. And then it swims by and it's literally like the size of the boat. But remember, no one else sees it first. Right. And he so Brody's just like freaking out and, and he's walks like, back. He just starts like babbling and yeah. he's like, but, but you're gonna need a bigger boat. You're gonna you're gonna need a bigger Which boat. Which was an improv line by you know, uh, Good job by Roy. Um so then everybody sees it and they're like, Holy mother of God, holy shit, 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 That's shit. shit. Footer. Even Quint, who's like 30. seen a lot of sharks has a lot of experience with sharks, is like, what the fuck? So they have to like rethink their whole strategy. So the strategy at this point is, let's hook a bunch of these fucking barrels on the shark to weigh him down so he gets like tired and can't swim and then we'll fucking kill him. Good plan, except the shark is so fucking huge and badass that it just like takes all the barrels and is like, what else you yeah. got, bitch? And they, it, they still are able to use it to know like when he's in the area though. So I guess it's like well, good and because like the shark work. was not working at this point, so the barrels were like for that reason too. But <laughs> um, yeah, so it, basically the shark keeps circling them. They're like, okay, whatever, whatever. So they, they take a break. They like drink a lot in the boat, whatever. And then the boat, the shark starts like bart like ramming into the ship and trying to like sink them it is one smart shark one smart shark and you combine that with sort of like quince madness because at one point he like destroys the radio 
they like I forget what happens to the engine because like all that water spills into it. So then yep. they like fix it and they do fix it. But then like Quint is in, like wants to like they hook him all with the barrels and they're like, let's drive it into the shallows and drown it. You know, they're kind of like running mm-hmm. out of options at this point. So they start like driving it in. But then he's like pushing the motor too hard, pushing the motor too hard. And the thing fucking bombs out, like explodes. And then the boat's fucking sinking. So now they're like shit out of luck because they're like, well, if the boat sinks, like we got to go in the water and we're going to get eaten. Yeah. So we got to fucking kill this we gotta, thing. We got to so do it. We so what's do the it. last option? So Hooper's like, um, hey guys, I got an idea. Uh, just put me in that shark cage and I'll shoot it with some poison. Put me in that flimsy little shark cage. Done that's and basically like done. tin foil with toothpicks attached to it. I can't. I can't even. So he so he gets in the cage. He gets lowered down. Here comes the shark. Oh no! What happens? He fucking like rampages on the cage, j- like whatever. Well, the guy, fucks it up. the guy drops his spear. He drops the spear like with the ASAP. syringe. ASAP. It's totally useless. <laughs> but Hooper manages to escape and like hides behind a rock in his scuba gear. So you're like, okay, all right, that was fun. So then they pull up the cage and it's all mangled, and they're like, oh nuts, <laughs> there goes our friend. But don't worry, we don't have any time to be sad about it because the shark fucking attacks the ship and he's like attack the ship attack the ship attack the ship and then it's just like falling and the then it like sinks so yep. the whole bottom is like full with water so then it's basically just like a slide into the shark's mouth right see you later so yeah Quint just like is like ah! Ah! and then falls <laughs> falls right into the shark's mouth which continues to just like chomp on him in half and then drag him in the water as he's like choking on his own blood and drowning at the same time it's like tariff it's it's, it's the awful. worst and then it's just fucking Brody. And he's like, oh, my God. And he's literally, you guys, he's like climbing up the little crow's nest. That's all that's left. Well, he's wait, got. Well, you uh, missed the part. So he was like, he's in like the cabin part. And the Jaws, Jaws like goes into like and just goes, ah. And he's like in the cabin with him. Luckily, there's all these oxygen tanks that they were using for the scuba gear. And he like kind of rams him in the nose with that. But then very smartly throws it into his mouth. And then he like chomps on a little bit and then goes back under. So there's oxygen tank in his right molar. <laughs> so Brody's like, "Come on, show me the tank, show me the tank." And then the shark comes at him, and he's like, "Smile, you son of a bitch!" And then sh- shoots him with the little pistol that he had, blows him up, shoots the shark, blows up, explodes because of the oxygen <sighs> tank. There's shark <laughs> debris <laughs> just like <laughs> falling <laughs> into the ocean. Hallelujah! The shark What's is that, dead. Like happy music that comes. I know. With it? It's like, it's like <laughs> yes. twinkling. It's like. <laughs> It's like the shark explosion guts. of the Death Star. It's <laughs> I like, know, it yes. really is. And then oh, it's awesome. the best, the piece that was just dance is that Hooper just like comes out of the water. He's like, sweet, you did it. And <laughs> they're like, no thanks to you, Hooper. But then they're like, what happened to Quinn? And he's like, mm, didn't make it. And then, D-A-D, dead. And he then real dead. <laughs> they paddle away on a couple of barrels to shore. You know what I love? It, sorry, it. I love about that scene is that, I mean, I, I don't know. I just think like Roy Schneider in this is like so good. And I love when Hooper's like, he's just like so happy that he's alive and then that, you know, Brody's alive. And he says, like, Quinn, like, kind of hopefully. And Roy Schneider just goes, no. Like, he just shakes his head and he's like, no. Good riddance. Dude was a whack job. I know, job. but it was just like, and like, he really did, like, die doing what he loved, let's say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Quinn's- still, like, I just feel like that was such yeah. like, a nice yeah. moment of it. Like yeah. and but they didn't really know him though, and they did think he was like a fucking crazy bag. So they're like, whatever. I mean, he was. Yeah. He was like the craziest person I've ever yes. seen in my life. <laughs> like, who destroys the Not radio? False. I'm unclear <laughs> why that prevents you from getting the shark. I know, like, you can this go time, out again. Even this later. time when we watched it, like you've seen this like so many times, and you're like, why did he do the radio? <laughs> like, what was the point of that? <laughs> I honestly think that it was just Robert Shaw was like crazy and drunk <laughs> and just did that, and then Steven Spielberg well, was like, fuck. <laughs> Importantly, why does he have baseball bats on the boat? Because that's like knock the fish did. out to uh, like knock him out. I good guess. Point, good point. Um, I'm like Evan but, yeah, Red Sox fan. He's like <laughs> so fucking crazy. So okay, <clears throat> so scariest parts, obviously. So the one of the main reasons I got into horror movies is that they used to play this show on Bravo called Bravo's 100 Scariest Movie Moments, and they went through all these moments from um, horror movies, and it just really like heightened my awareness of horror movies and made me want to seek out all these movies to watch. Guess what was most scariest moment? Sc- one number one scariest movie. movie moment. Yep, is the beginning. This scene. is number one. 
is number one is the beginning scene in Jaws when the girl is out there swimming. That's still, I mean, now, it's still scary. What makes me. this scene so scary is that A, obviously you can't see the shark. B, you Im- immediately imagine yourself in said position. C, the way that the shark first attacks her is by like pulling her leg down and she does this like amazing thing where she gets like pulled into the water and gasps like she just jumped into really cold water and it's it's so spine tingling like I can't Agreed. watch that scene and like not be upset did you read how they did the drowning noises no so they added it in post production and they had that actress sit in a chair with her mouth open like this and they just poured water in it and she was like just Yikes. Yeah, dry drowning okay. I mean not dry that's dry drowning is something else but <laughs> <laughs> like they just like and she was just making that noise as water was being pulled Ugh, down her throat. Yeah, it's horrible. So it's like really what was and happening. And then she's but. just getting like yanked around and obviously violently thrown around. Second worst part is when she makes it to the buoy yes. and you're like, and I'm sure she too is like, oh, like, okay, like I think that's, I mean, I don't know if she thought it was over, but she like makes it to some place where she could potentially like pull herself up. But my thought is always like, literally your legs gone right are your legs gone at this point yeah what's happening down there right and it's kind of cool they don't show it because again it's like all in your imagination which is always worse and then yeah and then she when she gets just like pulled under it's just it's just and the same thing happens when quint gets eaten where you're like you're literally dying of your wounds and drowning at the same time like that is the worst thing that could ever possibly happen to anybody um terrifying also, I read the book, um, the beginning of the book. Sweet and I both had the same memory. I think it really happened to me, and Sweet no. just copied it. No. And she thinks the other way around. Oh, my God. Please. But we would That's find psycho. the big Jaws book in the library, which was on the bottom shelf. Is it big? Is that long? Um, it was like a... I, I just remember at Eastern Public Library, it was like it seemed like a big tome. A, it was a... It's not long, so I don't know why I'm, I'm imagining yeah, I don't that. think it's long. But anyways, the beginning scene that describes the lady skinny to is like a hundred times worse because it actually like talks about what that woman felt. And the first thing that happens is she like, she feels, it's not even that she feels pain. She just feels like a tug and like a weird like flash of like white. And then she puts her hand down to feel her leg and she feels a bone. And it's like (laughs) that, like that was all I needed to like be like, see ya. And then I just like connect that scene is like 20 times worse because I just and and whenever I'm like by myself in a dark room, I'll just like think of that scene and be like, oh, my God. So that scene so terrifying. And it's I think it is 100 percent like warranted to be number one scariest movie moment. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And like also from the, the angle of like. I've seen that scene a hundred times and like it's still it so never gets any less scary. scary. It's so it gets scarier awful. than anything. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the genius with the shark being um, not seen because it was malfunctioning. There's a scene where two elderly gentlemen are I like, we're going to catch the shark. Yeah, we're going to get them. But then <laughs> the shark like bum rushes the dock or whatever and they fall into it. And it breaks the dock and is, and like, is like pulling yeah, a and chunk like of it floating away. with this guy is attached to. Mm-hmm. He's on, he was on the dock and now he's holding it like a raft and Jaws is just pulling it away and pulling it away. So he, he ends up getting off of it and then just starts swimming to shore, you know, doing the crawl. And then you see the whole dock that he was tugging like turn around. So you know that the shark is turning around to come after that guy. And the worst part for me in that scene is the guy who's on land, who's on the bit of the dock that didn't get taken into the water, is like, come on, Larry. Like, whatever his name is. Don't look back. Swim. Like, swim. Just swim like your life depends on it. And he's just, like, cheering him on, but, like, so scared that his friend is going to get eaten. And honestly, I don't know how that guy outswam the shark. Honestly, like, he was not swimming that fast. And then he gets to him, and it's, like, one of those things where it's, like, he's wearing boots, and it's, like, this slippery dock. And he, like, first of all, can't grab his hand because he's wet. And then he finally grabs his hand. His, like, feet are slipping. And you're, like, he's a goner. He's, he's a goner. He's you know that thing is just going to come and grab him. But he actually missed. Uh, it. And then they like lie on the yeah. dock and they're like, <gasps> can we go home now? And then yeah. the dock just like washes up. <laughs> kind of just like, he just leaves it there, the shark. Yeah, and he goes, can we go home now? So they like kind of like put like a lighthearted like end to it, but shit. Yeah, that scene, scene is intense. Good scene. Um, so the Alex Kittner scene we talked about, obviously so traumatic. Um, it's just, obviously it's like everyone's worst fears like come to light. We did not talk about poor Pippin, who is this joyful, beautiful, sweet black lab that a man is playing fetch with, with a stick. And he's thrown the stick and Pippin brings it back. 
And he's like, here, Pippin, here, Pippin. And you just keep hearing that. And that scene is like so upsetting because you see a dog and like, you know, there's a shark around. So you're like, people, if I was Brody, I'd be like, I don't care about these people, but like, don't let that dog go into the ocean. But whatever, he needs to chase a stick. So then when there's like kind of confusion and mayhem, there's just a floating stick by itself. Right, because you could kind of, because it's after, it's after the Alex Kittner gets killed, right? No, it's, before, it's, oh, it's right before, before. Okay. yeah. So you know so the shark's you, around. Right, but you had kind of forgotten about the dog at this point, because you're like, oh, just a random dog used as but scenery. The, yeah, but the owner's like, Pippin, like, Pippin. Right, so that's your first, like, kind of guess. You're like, uh-oh, wait, where is that dog? And then you're like, oh, no. It's just like the goat. One piece of wood. It's just like yeah. the goat in Jurassic Awful. Park. Except so, so but, much sadder. Like, God bless you, Steven Spielberg. Did not show the dog death. You know, it's again I something you just have I to be, I think that the floating stick might be worse. I mean, that is just the ultimate sad thing. I like to think in my, little, in my head, I'm just going to imagine that the dog was like, I hate my owner. <laughs> this is my opportunity to run away. And he like runs over somewhere <laughs> and is safe. Maybe it became um, the shark's sidekick and he's just riding on top of him. <laughs> Maybe the shark kissed him like in Splash and just gave him the ability to breathe underwater. And now they're living together in harmony. Baby Pippin except, swam to France. <laughs> except not because the shark is dead. But anyways, super sad scene. Only made worse by the fact that shortly after that is the part where all the old men are like, let's kill the shark, let's kill the shark. And then half of the old men are like, let me take my adorable yellow lab on the boat with me. What the fuck? There's so much dog negligence in this movie that it's like, it's so upsetting. Like, do not bring your dogs out oh, with totally. you on the and ocean scene, in a tiny dinghy. Talk about how, like, you were like, okay, the orca is not big enough. All those boats God, in that like are like these tiny motorboats, also overstuffed with, like, way too many fat fishermen. And they're just like, yeah, let's go shark hunting in my tiny little rowboat. Like, are you crazy? This is a shark we're talking about who has killed people. I mean, people are nuts in this. Like, the humans are dumb as it gets. Um, next, I would say, would be the, um, what's his name? Ben Which, yeah, something. Boat. They go out in a boat and they, they spot Ben's boat. Yeah. And Ben is like this, like, another, like, old fisherman. I feel like maybe to the level of Quint. Just like someone who's known around town as being this, like, fisherman who catches a lot of stuff and whatever. And they, no, they, they're they going out because this is, like, the feeding time, like you said, nighttime. And they're going to, like, where the shark feeds and they happen upon this boat. Ben, what is that? Do the G. Don't know. Yeah. But they, they're like, that's Ben's boat. So Hooper, again, is like, well... I got to go under there. I got to go on my scuba gear and I got to scuba down there and I got to look at something. And he's like, Brody's like, what are you talking about? Like, what a psycho. So he gets his gear on. He goes under the boat. He's like looking around. He finds a giant shark tooth embedded in the wood of the ship. And then all of a sudden, without warning, a head drops out of the hole <laughs> with like an eye like it's a pool of bushy goo and, and dangling off. Ugh. And the funny thing about that scene is that Steven Spielberg added that actually in also post or like hmm. later because the first scene that was like the scare scene the first scare scene was supposed to be the one the chum bucket one and he liked that but he's like ah I really, and like he saw the reaction that that got and got so excited about it that he's like i want one more but put this one before the chum bucket scene and then when it got rescreened, that that one got way more of a jump than the chum bucket scene. And that's when Steven Spielberg realized you get one like real big scare in a movie. And then after that, people are just like a little bit more in tune to like the scare. Unless they are me. But <laughs> yeah, that scene. So we were watching this, uh, me and Sweetie, and then our, our stepfather, Fu, and then Robin, Sweetie's friend. Ben who, Gardner's boat. Ben Gardner. Robin, who was on our center stage podcast, retired ballerina. Um, and... Sweetie, and like I knew it was coming, so this is where I put my knee up on the across the television so I couldn't see it because I knew this was going to happen. But <laughs> Sweetie and Robin, especially Robin, Robin jumped like yeah. a foot Robin and a half, like a mile. Like never seen somebody so scared <laughs> so in my she, life. Like, put her leg up as a dancer would. <laughs> she did this like crazy like dance leg, like Liza Minnelli dance leg. It was like woo. <laughs> 
It's <laughs> hilarious. I mean, it's a terrifying scene. You just don't expect it because I think part of you thinks that you're in a safe place because it's like a tiny little boat. Yeah. So there's no way that the shark could be like in the boat. Yeah. But you're not. You're like was not planning on a head just falling yeah. out. So you're and the just head like is gross. As fuck. I mean, it's like completely like gross color. Like I said, like one of the eyeballs is missing. One is like kind of dangling out by whatever the the thing that connects your eyeball to your skull. <laughs> It's disgusting. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. gross. Sure. It's gross. But yeah, terrifying scene. Okay, so there's that, and then they go out. So then the chum bucket scene, which okay. you described as like jumping, like it came out, which actually is not the case. He doesn't jump. He, it, just, he is, just like he just like opens yeah, his mouth kind of goes over and is just the there. He's like just there. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> it's just like right, so just upsetting. There. And it's so upsetting because it's not like there's no music cue to warn you that something bad is going to happen, that the shark's going to pop out. It's literally just, it's one yeah. of those scenes that's there's just no like, music cue. it's that's just the, the only time that there's not a music. cue. It's just like over your shoulder. And, and those kinds of scares, I think are the most terrifying because your guard is down and it's just like, bam in your face. And it's just the worst. So that scene, definitely number one, heart stopper for me. If, if we're talking like jumps, like, Oh yeah. my God, what the fuck? Um, and then the rest of the movie is the, the shark comes out and it is scary because there are still I still get nervous like figuring out where he's going to pop out. But when he's just like coming out of the water or like swimming by the boat and you see him, I am still scared, but I can watch it because it's not that like coming out of the water yeah. element that is so scary. Um, so, yeah, I'd say those are like th- most of the scary scenes. OK, so I'll add the Quimpy one. OK, right, right, right. And the part that bothers me about that scene. OK, so it's like, like I said, basically like the boat ends up being tilted to the point that it's basically like a slide directly into the shark mouth. And what happens is, is like Quint is like trying to hold on and Brody's trying to hold on to him. Again, slippery glove scenario. What is with the slippery gloves? Can't handle, can't handle the slippery I gloves. Mean, they were all like wet and shit like I that. I don't think but. Brody tried very hard to no. be honest. I mean, I don't think he really. Gave I think a fuck. he like hated him and was yeah. like, "Well, good, <laughs> good riddance." Yeah. Um. So he's like sliding, and sliding, and, and like, okay, here's the the two worst parts of it to me. So first, he's like kicking, like trying to save his own life, but then gets obviously so close to the shark that it's kind of like, well, I think this is kind of it, and is like really fighting it. But you also see for the first time, like Quint being terrified. You really don't see him being scared as like a veteran of the seas. He will talk about the Indianapolis story later. I mean, the guy is not really like scared of stuff. He's like lived a fucking life and he's seen a lot of bad stuff. Right. But there's this look in his eye because he knows he's going to die. That is so scary to me. And then, of course, he gets chomped right in the middle and then blood starts shooting out of his mouth. And then this other worst part is that Jaws has him and is just like flicking him from side to side. And he's basically like chopped in half, like within his mouth. And then he's kind of just dead and he drags him into the water with his like blood all coming out of his face. Scary. For me as a little kid, that was my number probably yeah. like two. I think I also, I think you were watching, also another memory is you were watching this at a sleepover in the basement and I like peeked around the couch and I saw that scene when Quint was dying and I was like, oh my God. And it's like, in your mind as the viewer, you clearly aren't, at, don't care about him as much as the other characters, right? Because he rubs everybody the wrong way, including you as the viewer. So if that was like Brody or Hooper, you'd be like, oh God, this is like devastating. This is like, awful but because he's like so like awful of a person you don't have that emotional connection to him i guess but you're still kind of like oh this is just awful to watch because it's the first one you really see someone getting like completely eaten in front of you not no one else like you really get to see that of all the victims yeah yeah it's horrifying awful um okay so favorite scenes so i guess we can just jump right to the indianapolis scene so this is the famous speech in jaws that like everybody cites as like their favorite fucking speech they people love to post this video on facebook be like best scene ever because i'm so cool and um it, it is a great scene it's an amazing monologue quint basically describes how he was on the in- uss indianapolis which is a sub submarine no, a battleship. Oh, a battleship. He delivered the bomb. And it the was bam. sunk in World War II by the Japanese and goes down in those seas. And um, it I was mean, delivering the atom bomb, so it was like a super secret mission. Oh. And um, to where, though? Because, yeah, it must have been delivering the bomb so to Okinawa. somewhere. Yeah. So delivering the bomb to somewhere, so it was like super secret mission, so like no one knew where they were. So they get torpedoed. 
and it goes no down. No one gets a distress signal because right. I guess nobody knew they were there. Uh, no, well, that was refuted. Refuted, I guess, that like they did get the signal, but like didn't hear it or like oh. didn't do anything because about then it. people eventually came, right. so they must have. So the ghost ship goes down, and like most, a lot of the people like die in the ship going down, but the rest of the crew is just stranded in the sea. And uh, like the way that Quint describes it, like every, it was like we were just all floating there, and then like one by one, men started getting like pulled under by these tiger sharks. And he's describing like how terrifying it was, and how like you didn't know if you were going to be next, and the person next to you could just be like dragged under. And he like describes the like lifeless doll eyes of a shark, and you're just like, because you know this is like obviously foreshadowing because it's basically how Quint dies. Right. And and then there, he's like this like awful moment where he like wakes up his buddy next to him and he's like come on man the the rescue ships are here but then he realizes his friend has been like cut in half by a fucking shark and you're like what the fuck so that's why he's so fucked up and probably why he drinks apricot brandy like on the regs so totally get it quint like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hate i'm, I'm not, not gonna, gonna hate on you? it are you kidding me um block that shit fucking out. terrifying everybody's like whoa that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And so like a couple great things about that scene. So A, true story. Awesome. I mean, horrible story, but awesome. B, uh, Robert Shaw tried to do that scene wasted because they're supposed to be kind of drunk because they're drinking all overnight and whatever. Apparently couldn't use any of that footage. He felt real bad. Uh, apologized to Steven Spielberg and he's like, let me do it. Like, let me try the next day. I'll be totally sober and fucking nailed it. And I guess that particular scene, they got like a playwright to come in because it is, like Sweetie said, like a monologue. So it's really has a different tone and kind of feel than the entire rest of the script, right? You obviously get to see like what made Quint like who he is today. Obviously mm-hmm. this like horrible thing. Um, what I love about that speech also is that like, um, first of all, the lead into it is them telling all these like kind of funny stories, right? About all their battle wounds. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, you have this scar. You know, they're making all these jokes. And then it's Brody who sees like basically what was used to be a tattoo. Probably just looks like scars now. Mm -hmm. And he thinks it's a scar. And that's what leads him to tell this story. And it takes everything down like 12 notches. I mean, they were like up in this high point, very stressful situation. They're joking around. And then it's like, whoa, like this is no joke. I also like in that scene that like half of it... (laughs) Like you got to like really kind of listen closely because it's if you're not paying attention, the Robert Shaw dialogue is like almost gibberish and you cannot understand what he's saying. So it's like almost like you are like them where you're like craning to hear on the boat. Like, wait, what is he saying? Right. Which I'm like, what? He wasn't drunk when he delivered that mono. Exactly. (laughs) He was pretty drunk. Um, That was acting. Which is like super fun. And I just want to play like a quick game. Sweetie, <laughs> please describe to me a random incident if, as if you were Quint. Let's say you went to the park and you met a weird homeless man. Okay. Please tell me how that went, Quint. <laughs> um, let's see. I feel like you, because you made up this game, you probably have this like all prepared. I, no, I didn't prepare anything. I just... So I was sitting on the park and there's this, this homeless man who came to me and Spanish ladies dancing. <laughs> you know, he like does yes, like random yes, jaunt, yes. jaunty chanties. Um, and he came up to me and he said, can you give me uh, some change? And I was like, oh, and then the sharks were all around us. And my friend <laughs> from Mike from Oklahoma. And then he was just like a bouncing buoy because now he was you know, Britain. Now, now you're just saying <laughs> things in the monologue. All right. Give me a scenario. Give me a okay. scenario. You went to 7-Eleven and bought a slushie. 5 p.m. Dusk. The air was stale that night. I walked by myself into 7-Eleven. The air was so cold by the frozen ice cream. I grabbed a hood, hood ice cream sandwich. It burned my fingers when I touched it. It was a cold ice cream that day. I took it to the register and I said, credit card. And he said, stick it in the chip. And I said, no. I'm not going to stick it in that fucking chip. <laughs> and that was it. So like, no. he just like makes <laughs> then like, you got to go June the 7th, 1945. <laughs> we delivered we- the bomb. 
<laughs> we delivered the bam. Seven hundred. Seven hundred like, smiles. Yeah. He's like seven hundred men went in that water. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred men went in that water. One came out with the hood ice cream cone. <laughs> it's like. I mean, it's great. It's really, I mean, so what if he was drunk or like permanently drunk? Like, yeah. great fucking monologue. It's so oh good. God, so I good. support it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't think of any other scenes that I'm like jonesing for. Do you got okay. anything else? Well, so I'm obsessed with the Brody's marriage, as I said to you before. I think they are adorable. They're like hot and heavy. Clearly they have two kids and they, um, you know, Mikey's probably, I don't know, when you say seven. And little Sean? I what if his he's name like was. 10. Yeah. Okay, 10. And like the little one's probably like three or something like that. Three or four. And so, but they're like keeping it hot and heavy and they're so cute and they're always flirting and kissing and like doing all this stuff. I just like love their relationship. Good looking couple. Love them. Love Ellen, Elaine, Ellen, whatever her name is. Awesome headscarf game going on. She's like a sassy little blonde. Just like love her. Like cute little ones. Wanna get one drunk? Piece. Fool around? Hey, that's my oh. favorite scene. You stuck it. So there's they, obviously they have a good time, let's say, and they she's like he's like looking at all his shark books because like I mean I love Brody the guy like fucking does his job because he's like shit shark attack let me study these sharks so he like gets all the shark books out of the library and he's like you know reading all through them so he's like obviously like flipping out and so like sweet little wifey that she is she brings him a drink. They're nice. I feel like they have a couple of cocktail hours under their belt always. And then she like sits in between his legs and like relaxes like on him, which I think is like the hottest thing ever. And then she's like, want to get drunk and fool around? And she says it in this like great voice. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with it. It's like it. a Mae West like, know. voice. It's crazy. She's so awesome. Yeah, so she's then cool. they're like, they're just so cool. And like, I love all the little scenes with him and his family essentially. So there's a one before Hooper comes over and he brings the wine. And we already said like, Brody's kind of so fucked up at this point that he's just trying to deal with like all of this tragedy and all this horrible stuff happening. Because I think it was right after the, the the mom of Alex Kinner like slapped him a bunch of times so he feels like really bad obviously that he like caused that little boy's death so he's really fucked up at dinner and like his little son is like mimicking him and it's so cute and he's like it's kind of like an extended scene it's just a great like just showing him as like a father and like what his kids think of him you know clearly they like love their dad but he seems like this sort of like figure you know because he's like a sheriff um, and so the little boy's like mimicking every little move that he does. And then he just clearly is just like really hurt and not a great day for him. And he like goes to his son. He's like, give us a kiss. And his little son like kisses him like right on the face. And it's so cute. And then he's just like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this is adult time. Uh, I love that Chief Brody. I think he's like amazing. Like I said, like I had not actually not seen French Connection up till like a couple. I saw it a couple months ago as my. AFI top 100 movie journey that I'm doing. So I saw him in that and that's actually what made Steven Spielberg like cast him in this because a lot of people were vying for that Sheriff Brody like role and um, for instance, Charlton Heston and hmm. he was just, I think Spielberg trying to find like the right age for that character because you don't want him like too young and I guess he didn't want to um, do Charlton Heston because Charlton Heston was the lead in Airplane and Earthquake. Airplane? And, uh Airport, airport, <laughs> sorry. Airport, airplane is a spoof of airport. And basically he said, if you see Charlton Heston in a movie, you know that like whatever the bad thing is doesn't have a chance because Charlton Heston's going to fucking win. So he wanted to, to show someone I think that was a little bit more of like an underdog, let's say. And I think that's why they give Brody also like all of those kind of quirks and not being able to swim or didn't like swimming and like all this stuff. So um, true. Not so a sailor. True. You know, that that kind of a thing. Um, but I think it was excellent casting. Again, I fucking love that Roy Schneider role. It's awesome. It's good. All right. So I think we should call Carol um, so she can tell us her story about how she saw this in the movie theater with our grandmother, her mother, Doris. Um, so let's give her a little call. Ring -a -ding -ding it's time to call Carol. Yeah. yeah. She's our mom. All right. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi, girls. How are you? Good. You ready to talk about Jaws? Yeah, I'm ready. 
Okay, so we know that Grammy and you saw this in the movie theater when it came out. In 1975. Yep, so please describe to us the thought process. What went into the planning here? Were you like, we need to see a movie, what's playing? Don't know what this is, let's see it anyways? Or did you know what you were getting into? What year was this again? 75, so you were 20. 75? Two. Oh, God, I was living, with, living at home still, I think. At 22? Before, huh? You were 22. Yeah. Was I living at home? I don't remember. When did I get married? 76? Oh, no, I graduated from high You got from married in 78. <laughs> Thank you. 76. So I did. <laughs> I didn't meet your dad yet. <clears throat> you hadn't. So we just decided to go to the movies. We wanted to see Jaws, and I guess I didn't have a boyfriend. I know yeah. I didn't have a boyfriend. Now, but and why did you want to? Why did you want to see it, though? What? I don't know why we did why I wanted to were there tra- were so there trailers back was it like then? the big movie to see yeah. this was a summer movie yeah, it was the blockbuster of the season yes. okay okay was it? yeah but you didn't know but did you know what you were getting into um well we knew it was going to be scary and everything but the, the funny thing was we get we got this movie so it was in Southbridge near where we used to live mm-hmm. in Wales where I grew up yep and um, so the nearest movie theaters were Palmer and Southbridge. They were like half an hour near either side. So we went to, Greg and I went to the theater and it was packed. There was like a line to get in. And they only had two single seats. When we got in the theater, we had to sit apart. <gasps> so, <laughs> so I don't know where she's at. And I, well, we had to, so we had to scream, you know, uh, and watch all the thrilling scenes alone. We sitting next to strangers. Oh my god! Even sit next to each other. Yeah. Oh my god! And were you like shat in your pants or like what was happening? <laughs> no. Yeah, it was scary. It was very scary. Yeah. I thought it was very well done, and uh, it was like you just couldn't. It was riveting. Okay. Do you remember? Um, were people like? You know, there's a couple big jumps in it, right? Do you feel like? Yeah. Did you do the jumps? The jump scares? Yeah. Were you like? Did people yeah. go like? Ah! And, yeah, did, and I, did they clap yeah. at the end when the shark got shot? Uh, yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, I love that when movies that when you're like so involved in a movie, it's almost like interactive. Like, you know, yeah. when the Death Star explodes in Star Wars, like when Jaws dies, you're just like, yeah. I love well, that. I jumped at everything. I remember jumping in myself and everything. Like, you just didn't expect, like, the shark and the. Yeah. Through your popcorn? <laughs> I can. I'm just picturing. Yeah, you're like your little scream that you do when like something is scary when you see like a spider. Yeah, Yeah. and it's like. Um, What did you? So we talked about a little bit how we watched this like you know, uh, in the let's say late '80s or early '90s. But a lot of the act, other than Richard Dreyfuss, a lot of the actors and actresses in this are not ones that we were ever familiar as kids. Like I just saw Roy Schneider in The French Connection like a couple of months ago. But like other than that, I had not seen any of these actors before. Like were these big actors of the time? Like had you seen Robert Shaw do stuff? Like I think Grampy knew Robert Shaw more than okay. I did. But Robert Shaw was very famous in his role in The Sting. Oh, okay. Apparently he's so a playwright he too. Huh? He's a playwright as well, or was a playwright. Robert, Sh- is this the same Robert Shaw? Yes, sure? he read Richard Dreyfuss one of his entire plays in the Orca when they were between filming. Oh my god! <laughs> what a nut! Wow! Wow! wow. Mm. Um, well, thanks. Well, then Richard Dreyfuss was had been in a lot of movies. Oh, so. Yeah, right. So yeah. that's the one we know yeah. because he had a. He's still, you know, he's still going, but he was in a lot of movies we had seen like yeah. after. Yeah. Wow. Well, thanks for that that inside info. Very I fascinating. Know, I'm sorry it wasn't very exciting. Oh no, that's that's I, I, we were I like very excited. I mean, you that. saw it in the yeah. theater. You're the only person I've ever known who's seen Jaws in the movie theater. Really? Yeah. yeah. But that's how you saw movies back then. No, I know, but like, I, I mean, I'm well, sure other people's parents did, but it's n- no one I know who is a al- lot who was alive at that time. The way. <laughs> The way that it was described to me was that you and Grammy were like, let's see a movie. What's this one? Jaws. Okay. So you went and then you're sitting in there and you're like, oh my God, (laughs) this is terrifying. But I guess maybe it wasn't like that. No, that's just always how I picture it. Like when you know when you get told stories when you're little and you just like envision it a certain way in your head. I think that's what I thought. Um, but it's still a great story. I think we must have read about it in the paper, like, and uh, that's mm. how you, you read about movie reviews. I think they they had trailers on TV. I'm sure. 
They did? I don't know. I In the seventies? Debatable like, about that. I'm no. not sure. I mean, I know they I had them, but I'm unclear that. where they played them. I they think only before stuff. other movies. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, amazing. I think it was funny though too that um, like when I look back on it and how in that movie where the mayor is all upset because it's going to ruin business. Mm-hmm. I, I find that people are just fascinated by the sharks and they don't really see that it's a threat and everything. Yeah. Like, Ooh, there's a white shark out there. Oh, yeah, let's see if we could see one today. You know, nobody's like running away. Yeah, from like I don't think it would cause like a devastating blow to the tourist economy. Like, what a loser! He's the true villain of this he movie. Is, a true villain. is Mayor Larry Vaughn? So, well, like some fisherman that we know said on camera, they just didn't show up. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? The shark? The people? The sharks, they've always been there. The sharks oh, have been there. oh, gotcha. Yeah. Good one. Um, cool. All right. Well, thanks for stopping in briefly. We're sorry. It was, Carol did not get to watch the Jaws with us on the Cape when we were there. She was yep. taken ill in bed. She was ill. And um, so she missed it. But um, she had a fever. She had a fever. <laughs> she was there in spirit, folks. And now we've included her in the podcast. So all is well. Yeah. Um, but guys. cool. The thanks, mom. To, to who? Um, Frankie, Frankie. 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 <laughs> I was like, who the <laughs> hell is Vincent? <laughs> we love you, Frankie. Um, all right. Okay. Well, Frankie, your a- new name is Vincent. I'm just going to tell you that <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> Bye. Best news ever. Um, anyways. All right. Love you, mom. Have all a good love night. You love you, mommy. Bye. 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 That's our mom. Hi, Carol. What a dish. What a dish. Um, yeah. So anything else we need to talk um, about? I just want to say some other like fun facts. If you ever just want a really good time, go on that IMDb trivia. It's probably the longest trivia I've ever seen. They're just the facts kept coming. Uh, you know, everyone's pretty familiar. The shark's name was Bruce. Bruce. After hey. Steven Spielberg's lawyer. Hilarious. Um, they made three of them. They cost $250,000 each. Oh, Bruce's. Yeah. Lightman movies. No. They made... Three sharks, you know, because they had them shooting on the left, shooting on the side. Then they had one filled with a whole skin one that they did do the full body shots. So they tried out the shark in freshwater at the like the Universal Studio lot. It works great. Oh, my God. Can't wait to make this movie. Uh, throw that thing into salt water. Boom. Dead weight. Sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Malfunctioned a lot. I mean, the thing was like a hot fucking mess. So, you know, Steven Spielberg describes it as he had like a lot of hubris, like making this film, young director, I can do anything. And he really wanted to shoot it in like the real ocean, opposed to which they almost do a majority of like, I think movies now in like big tanks Mm -hmm. when they do water scenes. So like no one shoots in the fucking ocean. So that's why he did it outside of Martha's Vineyard too, because if you go like 12 miles out, it's still only 30 feet deep. So it's not super deep around there. So he, they were able to like set up all their stuff. So they had like tons of problems with that damn shark though. And it was just kind of hilarious. Like what ended up transpiring. But like, so you said in the beginning, you know, happy accident, like ended up, I think making a better movie had the shark actually like worked as it should have um peter benchley super unhappy with the ending of this film because it's a lot different from the book because a main character dies in the book hooper but i'm kind of you know i don't think like they necessarily i don't know how i would have felt if hooper didn't make it i guess i would have been sad and like mostly just because like Brody would have had to fucking paddle in by himself. <laughs> but they weren't that far away. I didn't realize yeah, until this weren't. viewing, like, they weren't that far away from no. shore. He could have made it. Yeah. But, yeah. And actually, when I was little, like, I thought Hooper did die in that cage. Mm. Like, I obviously was not looking at the screen for most of it. So, missed the part where he swims away and yeah. hides in, un- behind a rock. Well, it's a little convenient that he, like, swam up to the surface once everything transpired. <laughs> right. Was he, like, watching and, like, oh, right. no, my friends are in trouble. I guess I'll just stay here and wait. And then he sees the body parts like coming yeah. down and he's, he's like, like oh Woo! safe to come up now safe. i guess i'm good good job I mean, i'm surprised he didn't just ghost i know he was like later <laughs> see ya like make a new life for himself right like, um oh my god the return of hooper that'd be good that'd and be then good. lastly i think i should end on a quiz for you which i'm sure you're gonna get 100 percent sharks um okay so jaws nominated for the best picture for the 1976 oscars cool one out of only six horror movies to 
be nominated for Best Picture. Nominated? Yes. Oh, okay. Can you name well, the other five? We've already talked about the ones that have won. Okay. Which were... Well, it's only one is one. Silence of the Lambs yep. is the only one that has won. Yep. Check. The, the other ones... Oh, and I think Jaws was the one that I missed last time you quizzed me about good this. Good call. Good call. Um, was another one nominated... Oh, The Sixth Sense. Yep. No, it was The Sixth Sense. That was the one. Okay. Check. Um, and then was it... I always say The Shining, but I think it... I bet nope. that's not it, right? <sighs> Fuck. Um, Psycho... No. Nope. Uh, I'm Come out. On, you got this. We've we've done Alien. We've, we've covered oh. this one. We've covered it. Yep. Oh fuck. Poltergeist. Nope. <sighs> Keep going. But like you're close. You're close. You're hot. You're the hot. Exorcist. The yes, Exorcist. Yes. <laughs> and then two relatively new ones, which I think you're forgetting about. Oh, Get Out. Yep. And hint, hint, hint. Ballet. Black Swan. Yeah. Woo! Cheek! You got it. <laughs> So yeah, so nice, like, those are all such great movies, and I think they all should have won, let's be honest. Um, those are fine films. Horror should not be shut out of the best picture. These are great. Um, I love this movie. It is a great summer flick, for sure. First summer blockbuster ever. And I think one of Steven Spielberg's finest, by far. I can't, I don't see any flaw in this movie, honestly, at all. Stevie Spears, Stevie Spears. Stevie. I wonder, remember how we always joke, how like, ooh, like, What's Steven Spielberg like keeps always like something kind of crazy from this. What do you think he has from this movie? Shark Tooth. Yeah. Probably. Uh, maybe that'd be head. easy. Ben's head the from the head. boat. That'd be good. Yeah, that would be good. Um, maybe Chrissy's arm. Ooh. Though, when they're on the beach, I guess, they couldn't make the arm look good, so they just like s- like covered up some like prop assistant and just had her <laughs> stick her arm out of the sand. That's fun. Pretty cool. She's nice ma- nice good nails. Good claim to fame. Good I mammy. know, I noticed that. Which is funny because when you see that character, she's like totally hippy-dippy. Yeah, she's like, like, she would not. I always thought that was super out of yeah. place, too. I'm like, wait <laughs> like, a minute. Wait, does she, she have like nice Chrissy manicure? Chrissy has a manicure. Nails. Like, what? Not real. So funny. We both noticed that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, great job. Um, seriously, though, guys, good movie. Scares the shit out of me. Probably won't watch it again for like another 20 years, but like great fucking flick. So if you guys love it, if you want to talk to us about it, you can come and find us on Twitter at The Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge Sent Us. Thanks for listening. Bye. Do your little bye. Bye. <laughs>